Hello there. So, I'm building myself a gaming computer, an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X with no graphics card, because AMD and Nvidia have drastically underestimated the demand for their new 3000 series and 6000 series uh, graphics cards respectively, you can't get them for love nor money. Sure, you can pay a scalper hundreds and hundreds of pounds over the odds, or you can buy a 1700 pound 3090 Nvidia card. Hmm, let me see about that. I can't get hold of one of these fancy new graphics cards, so I turn my attention to what I could buy in their place. What graphics card currently available that must be reduced by now, surely, should I buy to get good frame rates specifically in Flight Simulator 2020? Flight simulators have always been very demanding. My dad's been playing them since the 80s, uh, from when they were just kind of wireframe things or blocks of colour on the screen. Well, now they're extraordinarily detailed and you really need quite a powerful computer to get decent frame rates. And of course, everybody these days is gaming in 4K, which is an added burden for graphics cards. Now, I've done some computery analysis and I'm going to show you which graphics cards are best for Flight Simulator 2020 in 4K in ultra settings, uh, which are best value for money and which I think are worth buying. Incidentally, because of the ridiculous situation with the new Nvidia and AMD graphics cards, most other graphics cards that are half decent have started to sell out. And we'll talk a little bit about the eBay prices later on because my advice just to cut a long story short, in case you stop watching the video, don't buy graphics cards from eBay, especially second-hand ones, and I shall tell you why later. So the first thing I've done, as you can see here, is plot all of these graphics cards against their average frames per second. I've taken these values from a review on the internet, and I'll leave a link to that review down below. These are the graphics cards that were available just a few months ago. The 2080 Ti, which is renowned for being absolutely fantastic, or at least it was, in ultra settings in 4K, Flight Sim 2020 will average 32.7 frames a second. Now that doesn't mean you're going to get a solid 32.7 frames a second. There's going to be a range either side. Sometimes the frame rate will be higher, sometimes it'll be lower. But the average is a fairly good indication. You need at least 25 frames a second to have a smooth looking image. But you can see that the Titan RTX gets an average of 35 frames a second and it kind of decreases linearly down to the uh, 5600 XT which gets an average of, oh blimey, 8.4 frames a second. So this is unusable in 4K. It might be usable in 1080p but Everything's going 4K gaming now. If we look at the brand new graphics cards, which I've taken from a different source, and so I've presented them separately here, you can see that the 3090 gets an average of 45 frames a second in 4K with ultra settings, which is extremely good. Even taking into account the 1% minimums, that is going to be smooth virtually all the time. Looking at the 3080, we're down to 42, so yeah, what's that? That's a difference of three frames a second, um, so it's a little bit slower. We've got the 6800 XT, which is down to 34, a little bit surprising and a little bit at odds with some of the reviews we've seen online that say that the 3080 and the 6800 XT are kind of equivalent cards. Certainly for flight sim, it doesn't seem as if they are. But then we've got the 3070 and the 6800, which are just a little bit lower still, down to about 30 frames a second. So these are all tolerable graphics cards. Well, they should be. So if we wanted more than 25 frames a second, we need a 2080 FE. But this doesn't tell us which graphics card is best value for money. So we need to look at the prices of these graphics cards. And here you can see there are there are two obvious outliers. We've got the 3090 and we've got the Titan RTX. So the 3090, brand new, I've got it here as £1,500. You might be able to find some at that price, and indeed that might be the recommended retail price. But these days you won't pay less than £1,700. The Titan RTX, 
I've got here is about the same. Now, an interesting point, and this is, I'm gonna talk about that eBay thing I mentioned earlier, the prices for everything to the right of the Titan RTX here, these are all second-hand prices from the CEX website, which is a company in the UK that sells second-hand technology. I assumed that the second-hand prices would be considerably lower than the brand new prices. You know, a reasonable assumption. Looking on eBay, what I found was that actually these CEX prices are pretty good. A lot of sellers on eBay are selling their used graphics cards for more than these prices, which is a little bit silly of them, I think. Well, it's greedy of them, that's what it is. Now, a second-hand graphics card, you don't know how much it's been used. Even if a seller says it's barely been used, it's probably been used for Bitcoin mining, hasn't it? Graphics cards do break, and if they've been overclocked and overstressed, then the lifespan of the card could be considerably reduced. So I personally would never buy a second-hand graphics card, although I did consider it. The other thing, and this is actually kind of the biggest takeaway message here, um, these second-hand prices, I then went to look up the new prices of some of these graphics cards on Amazon, PC World here in the UK, and actually found that in many cases, these cards are the same, if not cheaper in price, if you buy a brand new sealed version of the card. So why buy a second-hand one? Don't buy it from eBay, or at the very least, do your research before you commit. So the final part of my analysis was to work out the cost per frame. So if you get 25 frames a second on average in your game, how much does each of those frames per second actually cost you? So to do that, you just take the cost and divide it by the number of frames per second. And then you get this funky looking graph down here, which essentially is a graph of value for money. This one here at 33.33 pounds per frame is the uh, 3090. And here, even higher than that, we've got the um, Titan RTX at nearly 43 pounds per frame. So these are exceptionally expensive graphics cards. The 3090 is the best graphics card. It's going to give you the best performance on whatever you're doing, but it's just not good value for money. You could get better value for money buying another graphics card. And in fact, looking at this, you could probably get better performance by buying two of a card that costs less than half the price, because it's actually possible to put two GPUs in certain configurations, do your own research in a computer and run them together at the same time. So let's look at the cheaper graphics cards. Let's confine this a little bit more to slightly more sensible graphics cards for Flight Simulator. So frames per second greater than 20. Well, narrowly missing it is the 5700 XT by AMD, which was the graphics card that I was going to buy, um, but changed my mind when I found the 2060 Super. For the time being, I'll actually be running Flight Simulator in 1080p, so, this will be adequate for me. This graphics card has got a cost per frame of £18. This was assuming a second-hand cost of 365 Well, I've actually just bought a brand new 2060 Super from PC World for £350. So it's even better than that. Good value for money card that should do all right with Flight Sim, just not in 4K. This one is quite interesting. We've got the 2070 FE here, which is 17.5 pounds per frame, uh, which was averaging 21.4 frames a second. So it's a little bit higher. Interestingly, looking at the cost per frame for the brand new graphics cards, they're all better value than a lot of the second-hand ones you will buy online. I know that really doesn't help us out when we can't actually buy these graphics cards, but it's still interesting to know. Looking at the 2080 Super and the 2080 Ti, they're over 23 pounds per frame. So yeah, for heaven's sake, don't buy one of those if you want to get good value for money. So my recommendations based on this analysis are an RX 590 if you, know, you really just want 
to do a little bit of gaming and get all right gaming performance. You get away with that and it's good value for money. The RX Vega 56 is actually the winner in terms of value for money in this analysis, um, costing here uh, £235 and achieving 14.6 frames a second in Flight Simulator. So not good, but it's good value for money and you'll get decent performance in 1080p. My next um, suggestion here is the 2060 Super, um, which as I say, I bought for about 350 quid. It's a difficult situation really we're in, isn't it? Because, you know, you don't want to pay the scalpers, you don't want to even pay the big companies who put their prices up because they haven't got a lot of these graphics cards. But at the same time, you need a graphics card. But ideally, in terms of the brand new graphics cards, and this is an extra takeaway point from this video that I didn't expect to make. Honestly, the 3080 looks to be the best value for money. It's got pretty good performance, and it's also fairly priced compared to the other graphics cards. So that's what I would get. That's what I'm aiming to get next year if these graphics cards ever become available. Anyway, have you got any of the graphics cards that I've mentioned in this list? Are you using them in Flight Simulator 2020? I would like to know. Thank you to my loyal Patreons who are scrolling down the screen now. You're very generous. Thank you to George Foote and Magnanimous Meg who also give me extremely generous donations. Thank you very much. I shall see you next time for another video.